please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're just going to discuss a brief step. Uh, obviously, if you're going to have a website, you are going to need a domain name. And we'll just show you how to do that briefly in case you haven't done this before. Now, obviously, there are very there are a number of places where you can get a domain name. Most marketers will be using either the, the website Namecheap or they'll use Get GoDaddy. Both of these companies are used to internet marketers and their setup is fairly easy once you actually purchase hosting. So once you know what your domain name is, if you want to name it something around your niche or if you want to brand it around yourself, you can do that. Of course, uh, when possible, you want to get a .com if you can. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's pretty simple process. Uh, you're going to need to buy a domain name, get your uh, get get your account set up, and then once you've done that, you'll be ready to go on to the next step. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to go through the next step in building your website. You are going to want to po purchase your own hosting account, and that's a fairly simple process. I'm going to show you two companies that a number of internet marketers use. Uh, however, you can use whatever company that you feel most comfortable with, uh, but these are two companies that uh, probably the bulk of internet marketers are going to be using in one way or another. Now you are going to see a number of, of marketers using HostGator and uh, it's fairly simple to get an account started. Um, you're just going to go ahead and sign up for uh, an account and if you're only going to have one website you can always come back and expand. There's no need to go and get uh, reseller or VPS or any of those things uh, yet uh, until you have more websites and when you get started you can just go ahead and get your basic hosting account from HostGator. A number of marketers will also use Bluehost. The prices are comparable. You might be tempted to use someplace like uh, GoDaddy or Namecheap because you got your domain names there, but it's recommended that you use a, a different company for your domain name that you do for your hosting. So that is why we are showing you both HostGator and Bluehost as opposed to the other two companies, GoDaddy and uh, Namecheap, both of which will sell hosting. But again, make sure that if you, po if you possibly can, use a different company for your hosting and for your website because when there's a problem, you want to be able to isolate that problem and it's easier to isolate the problem when you have those two sources in different places. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to connect our hosting and domain name. And uh, it's a very brief process, but it is one that you want to take note of. Once again, now I would suggest that if this is something that you just don't want to do, uh, consider having this outsourced either on Fiverr or consider having it outsourced on Elance or Odesk. So if the process uh, is a little too technical, you don't want to do it, uh, just have the process outsourced. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and take a look. Now when you work with a company like HostGator, they're going to give you some information uh, in your account information about name servers right now in this particular case these two name servers are going to be unique and what you're going to do with these name servers is you're going to go over to your domain name and you're going to use these name servers this is the information you're probably going to get it in an email and you're going to connect your domain name with the name servers at your hosting account so what you're going to do, and I'm going to take a look over here in, in GoDaddy, and this is an actual domain name. So what you would do is you'd go inside of the name servers area. Now this particular case has already got some name servers in there, but if we wanted to change it, we'd click manage. And then we'd basically type in custom name servers, and we'd put in that information that we got here from HostGator. 
right which is likely in an email or likely someplace on your dashboard inside of HostGator you're gonna put this uh, information in here add your name servers and then it's gonna take uh, it could take up to 24 to 48 hours that's what they typically say and uh, it could be shorter so you want to be checking back and forth to make sure that your uh, your hosting account and your domain name are connected but uh, you'll, you'll need to give it uh, some time it's not going to happen uh, instantaneously it typically is going to take a little while so once you've done that then you will have uh, your domain name set and you will then have your hosting ready to go and you will ready then be ready then to build your website so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to just go through a brief process of showing you how to upload files to your domain name and your hosting. And whenever you place a files on your domain name and hosting you are going to need to have a special program uh, that's called an FTP program and we'll show you that right now now the free program that most marketers use is called FileZilla and all you gotta do is go to the the FileZilla uh, link that goes right here at the top you're gonna wanna download the client copy uh, so you know you, there's also a server download but you want to download the client copy and then you're going to have a program uh, on your hard drive now that program is gonna look something like this and what you're going to be able to do is you are literally going to be able to see your website from the other side or from the or from the other end and you are going to be able to upload files to it now in this box that is the host box this is going to be the name of your domain name. So in this particular case, you're going to want to, without the www, without the HTTP, going to write, want to write in your host name. In this area, you're going to get a username. Now this username is going to come from your hosting account. right? So you'll need to get that information. It'll typically come in an email, and you're going to use that information in order to log in. You're also going to get from your host a password to use. Now you'll be able to use that password for this domain name and this hosting and that will allow you to log in and get into the files into your uh, into the back area of your website. You're going to see one other box here and that's going to be the port area. Uh, you're not going to use that area too much. So for the most part, if you use HostGator, you'll just be able to use these three boxes in order to get your website, uh, in order to get your website started. Now, once you have all that information entered in here, you're just going to click the quick connect button here. And when you do that, you're going to see some files here. You're going to see this particular directory that says public HTML. Now that's really where you're going to put all of the files that the public is going to see. Now when you want to create a place to, let's say, put a file that's going to be downloaded, you're going to do it inside of this public HTML folder. So the way FileZilla works is that once you're logged in, you can literally cl click these directories and use them just as you would on your personal computer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click inside of the public HTML folder. And as you can see, there are no folders there. So what I'm going to do now is just so that you can see me do it, I'm going to create a folder and a directory and I'm going to just right click. I'm going to create a directory and I'm going to put in here bonus. Right, so if I want to deliver my bonus from that directory, now all I've got to do is click inside of here and I'll literally be able to use this directory on my server in order to deliver my bonus. So let's take a look at how I would do that. So of course what I would do is I would make it deliverable. I'd right click it. I'd send it to a compressed file on my, on my computer. Then once I do that, then it's ready for uploading to my server. And literally all I've got to do is drag and drop it up to my server. And I'm going to do that by just sliding it over, dragging and dropping it into that bonus file. And it's going to start the upload process. And there you'll see it's now on my server. 
and now I can deliver it. Now, uh, in order to get the URL, um, I, all I would have to do is have my domain name and then forward slash and this directory. So when you see the public HTML, you might want to say that that's just like seeing your domain name. So this would be your domain name forward slash bonus and then your webinar file and you would have a file that is ready for delivery. And that is how you upload files to your hosting. So with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to discuss an easy website alternative, both to manage and to get installed. And it's actually called WordPress. You may have heard of it. Now we're going to do a brief WordPress installation. And all you're going to have to do is to get into the control panel of your website or the C panel. And then we are going to get started. Now once you're inside of your control panel or C panel as it is called, you are then going to want to look for this area for software and services. Now wherever you see a software and services installation uh, installation facility, you are going to log into one called Fantastico and uh, we'll just go ahead and click this link. Once we're on the inside, we are going to look for WordPress and we're going to click that. And then we are going to do a new installation. So all you've got to do is click new installation for WordPress here. And if you want to install WordPress as your main website, you're not going to put anything in that directory. You're going to give yourself an administrator name and password. You're going to want to type in, uh, you want to give yourself an admin nickname. Uh, you're going to want to put the email address where you want everything to go to. And then uh, this you can leave blank or you can write something in here. This is what you're going to call your site. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. And then we're going to uh, just click install WordPress. Okay, Fantastico will then uh, prompt you to finish the installation. You're going to click that button there. And then you want to have the details sent to your email address. And then you are ready to log in to your website. You want to go ahead and click this directory. And that will bring you to your WordPress website. And then all you'll need to do then is log in. And you will then have access to your website. Your website will be very basic when you look at it. And it will need some customization. Uh, there are lots of tutorials online as to how you can customize your website. But your website is basically then installed and you can start using it in order to give your subscribers valuable information as well as to do some list building. Now in the next video, we are going to show you how to put your autoresponder code or your squeeze page on your actual website. So with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to show you how to take your autoresponder form and place it on your WordPress website. And it's a fairly easy process to do, although you might want to uh, size or, or, may, or adjust the size of your autoresponder or squeeze page. But we're first just going to show you how to get it on to your website. Now you probably recall the page where we created our squeeze page or our autoresponder page. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to the publish button here. And you're going to notice that we use the uh, we use get response to host our form the last time. But what we can do is we can click this button that says we will install our own form. And so in order to do that, all we've got to do is to pick up this JavaScript code right there, copy it. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go over to uh, the uh, the uh, our WordPress website. We can put it on a page, we can put it inside of a post, or we can put it in a widget. Now in this particular case, we're just going to use a page here. I'm going to add a new page. 
and I'm going to go over to the text area and I'm going to put my code in there. I'm going to click publish and I'm going to give my page a title. And then we're going to click publish. Once we've done that, if we can view the page here, and our WordPress uh, website now has our autoresponder form. All we've got to do is we can name uh, this or we can adjust it to look the way we want on our website. But that is uh, how you get your form onto your website. You can put it inside of a post. You can also put it inside of a widget. Pretty much you can make it as flexible as you want inside of WordPress. Now, once again, uh, if these things are too technical for you or you want to do something specific, the best suggestion is that you would go ahead and have this outsourced. It is something that people can do very inexpensively and you can spend your time then on marketing your business. So with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much.